This video is going to be an easy guide on how to play Wii and GameCube games on your PC using the Dolphin emulator. All you need is a computer and any type of controller, so let's get started. Now I personally am going to be installing Dolphin onto my external hard drive and that way it'll keep my PC a little bit cleaner and have everything to do with Dolphin on there, but of course you can put it right onto your PC. I'm also going to be showing you how to set up a USB sensor bar that is cheaper than the Dolphin bar, and even if you don't have a USB version, if you have one for your Wii, you can use that one too. I'll show you later in the guide. On top of that, I'm also going to be setting up an actual GameCube controller with an adapter. But again, you do not need this stuff if you want to just play the games on your PC. They are just extras that can give you a better gaming experience on Dolphin. Everything I use will be linked in the description. But first step, just go to Google and type in Dolphin. And one of the first links should be the Dolphin emulator download. So click on that. It will take you here and it automatically detects what you are on. So mine detects that I'm on Windows. If you're on Mac, it'll detect Mac and so forth. But we're going to just grab a beta version, which are the most stable versions and grab the X64. So just click on that, download it. Once you have that, we can minimize our browser, open up your downloads and you should see Dolphin Master X64 right there. I'm also gonna open up my hard drive, which is a MacZone 500 gigabyte. So downloads on the left, hard drive, or wherever you're gonna install it on the right. You can also install it right to your desktop. Literally anywhere on your computer will work. But as you can see, I already have Ryujinx set up on my hard drive, and I have a whole list of my backed up games. So this way, I'm just gonna keep everything organized. But we're gonna open up the Dolphin Master zip file. You will need an extraction software like WinRAR or 7-Zip. Open that up and just grab this Dolphin X64 folder and drag it to wherever you wanna install it. So for me, I have a folder with my emulators in there. This is Ryujinx, so I'm gonna grab it and install it to there and it is transferred over. We can exit the zip file. We can delete it from our computer because we no longer need the zip. Exit your downloads. And here are our Dolphin files. If we go inside, we have a whole bunch of stuff, but the important one is the Dolphin application. You probably don't always wanna go all the way into this folder to load Dolphin. So what I'm gonna do is right click on the application, go to show more options, and we're gonna create a shortcut. So there we go, we now have a Dolphin shortcut which will lead to the Dolphin application. I'm gonna cut it, and now you can paste it anywhere you want on your computer. The desktop is the most convenient, but in my case, I'm gonna back, back, and along with Ryujinx, I'm gonna put it right there. So there we go, we now have a Dolphin shortcut. It's in a much better place. I'm gonna rename it, and it looks quite nice now. But once you're ready, go ahead and load up Dolphin. When you load it for the first time, it's gonna ask you if you wanna authorize Dolphin to report information to the developers. You can select yes or no, and then you will be in the Dolphin emulator. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna show Dolphin where to get our games. So just double click on the Dolphin emulator and you will be able to select a folder. So I personally keep my games on my hard drive games folder and in Wii and GameCube. So your Wii games need to be WBFS format. You can back them up on USB Loader GX on your real Wii or VWI. Or you can join my Discord and ask about the other method. GameCube must be ISO version. And again, you can back them up or you can join the Discord and ask about the other method that I can't talk about here. But just select the folder that your games are in and they should pop up. As you can see, I got all of these games. Some of the icons might show up, others won't. But if we go into config, interface, and here we have an option to download the game covers for grid mode. So if you want, you can check that and close it. This is not grid mode, so we are gonna go to view, and you can change it to grid view. And eventually they should all load, and if you want your Dolphin emulator to look like this, you have that option. But again, if you wanna change it back, just go back to list view. But grid view is nice because it has the actual covers. Next up, we're going to go to graphics. So our first option in the graphics configuration window is our back end. Now the fastest one is Vulkan. And if your PC can support it, I do suggest using Vulkan. If you have a lower spec PC, OpenGL or Direct3D11 are your best options. So I'm going to leave it on Vulkan. The, under the adapter, it has picked out my graphics card, but if you hover, it says, if unsure, select the first one. Aspect ratio, we are gonna change this to 
16 by 9. Otherwise, it'll start the Wii games and the GameCube games in 4 by 3. 16 by 9 is a lot nicer. You have the option to start it in full screen or not. If you want it to start in full screen, have it checked. I'm going to leave VSync on as it can prevent screen tearing. However, if you do run into issues with lag on your games, you can uncheck it and see if that helps. Head over into enhancements and here we have an option to upscale our graphics. So if you play on the Wii, you'll know that the graphics are not the best. The native resolution is as follows, but if you have a better PC, you can click on this and change it all the way up for 8K, but you need a really good PC for that. I suggest just trying out 1080p at three times native and see if your computer can support it. If you have a better one, four times native is also a good option, but I'm gonna select three times for now. Anti-aliasing, if you hover over, it will help with getting smoother edges on objects, making it look better. So if you have a better PC, you can try to improve that. I'm gonna select two times and see if that works for me. Texture filtering, it will enhance the visual quality of textures. So again, it's just another enhancement. Again, if you have a lower spec PC, leave it on default, or you can try two times as well. I'm gonna do two times to give it a little bit of a boost. Now that is pretty much it for graphical enhancements, but we can close that window. And now it's time to configure our controllers. So go into the controllers tab. I do have a real GameCube controller I'm gonna hook up, but for anyone that does not have that, I'm going to be connecting a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, a third party one that has a Bluetooth connection. It's connected to my PC, but to set it up, just go to port one, standard controller and configure. And here you can map your Switch Pro as it already selected my Switch Pro controller, but if yours didn't, uh, just go under here and select whichever controller you want. You can use an Xbox controller, PS5, anything that connects to your PC via Bluetooth. So select that one, but to map it, just select the button and then click the button that matches it on the controller. So click it and select the one on your controller and go through and do the same. You most likely can leave the control stick alone. As you can see, it works fine on both. But once you're done mapping it, you can type a name for this. So I'm gonna do Switch Pro, save and close. Now you have a GameCube controller. If you have a real Nintendo GameCube controller like me, along with an adapter, we need to download an additional software so that it can get detected. So linked in the description is this page here. We can scroll down. This will work on Linux, Mac, and Windows. I'm on Windows, so I'm gonna click that one. It'll take us down here. And under using Zadig, we can click download and launch Zadig. So click on that and it'll bring you to this page and we can click on the exe file. Click on it and it should download. You can minimize the window, open up your downloads. You should see the Zadig 2.9, click it to run. Select yes if Windows prompts you. Click yes for checking for updates. And here is the program. On my adapter it has a switch between the Nintendo Switch and Wii U or PC. I'm gonna leave it on the Wii U one. And in the drop down menu, you should see your device somewhere. Mine is GameCube for Switch. I'm gonna select it, double check that your USB ID is 057E0337 and that it says win USB on the right side and when you're good to go, just hit replace driver. You are about to modify system driver, that's okay. Just press yes and it will install the driver. This can take up to five minutes, so I'll meet you when it's done. Once it was installed successfully, press close. We can exit the program and back on your controller settings, go into your port and select GameCube adapter for Wii U, configure, and it should say adapter detect. You can enable rumble and you can even simulate your DK bongos. <laughs> press okay and you should be good to go for that. So that was our GameCube controllers. Now it's time for your Wii remotes. You can certainly emulate your Wii remote, but I am personally gonna be using a real Wii remote. And this will also work with the sensor bar that I have and any attachments like the nunchuck or the classic controller. So to do this, we're gonna change emulated Wii remote to real Wii remote remote and we're going to hit refresh and then press one and two at the same time on your remote. If that doesn't work, flip over the Wii remote, open up the cover and hit the sync button after pressing refresh instead. If that doesn't work, just hit continuous scanning and try those same things again. And if it vibrates, you are connected. 
but now you have a real Wii remote. My remote didn't want to connect until I turned on continuous scanning, so sometimes you just have to try a couple different things. And lastly, just make sure that you have your sensor bar plugged in. So if it's a USB one, plug it into your PC. Technically, it doesn't even have to be in the PC. As long as it's plugged in and on, it should work. And on that note, you can also use your regular Wii sensor bar all you need to do is plug it into your Wii or Wii U, turn your Wii or Wii U on, and it should work. But make sure to do that after connecting your remote to Dolphin because they might try to connect to your Wii U when it's on. But once you have your sensor bars, your controllers all set up, we can close it and let's start a game. Let's try Wii Sports. Awesome, here we go. Yes, as you can see, the sensor bar works fantastic. It is on top of my monitor right now. Let's try some tennis. The motion controls work great as well. Now one thing to note is Dolphin does not automatically disconnect your Wii remote, so make sure to do that yourself when you're done playing. But there we go, our Wii games work fantastically. Just hit escape if you want to exit the current emulation, press yes and it'll take you back to Dolphin. And now we can try a GameCube game. If you get this prompt, it just means you have an end kit disk image. It'll still work, but there are certain limitations. So just hit, I am aware of the risks and want to continue, press OK, and you'll load up your game. And there we go, I'm playing Super Mario Sunshine on my PC with a real GameCube controller. But there you have it guys, that is the full guide on how to set up Dolphin for Wii and GameCube games. If this video helped you out, make sure to hit that like button, it really helps the channel out and I appreciate your support. If you have any questions, you can comment down below or join the Discord linked in the description. But thank you guys so much for watching, stay funky and happy modding.